Hi, my name is Shannon Seacrest, and I'm the Deputy Executive Director of the Colorado Cross Disability Coalition. I'd like to welcome you today as we honor our staff and the Americans with Disability Act. Our staff has made many accomplishments since early 2020, despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Advocacy efforts in priority issues experienced by Coloradans with disabilities, such as transportation, affordable housing, employment, and equitable health care are made possible by the incredible staff presented in this video. Hi, I'm Jamie Lewis. I work for the Colorado Cross Disability Coalition and I am their transit advisor. My job is to make sure that our community has access to uh, jobs, groceries, recreation, and healthcare. By working with different organizations, we make sure that there's a good transit, that there's good paratransit. So our community has access and can participate with everyone. You know, one of the things that really surprised me in the last couple of years was the partnerships we had, especially RTD. During the time of COVID, they helped deliver groceries uh, to our people. So they did not have to go out. They helped deliver medicines. So our people didn't have to go to pharmacies. Working with this kind of collaboration is what makes transit great in this region and throughout the state of Colorado. We thank you for your support. Support Colorado Cross Disability Coalition. Hi, my name is Andrew Montoya, and I'm an attorney with the Colorado Cross Disability Coalition Civil Rights Legal Program. Some of the victories that our civil rights legal program have had over the past couple of years include, most notably, a jury trial that we won last month. The case was Colby versus Endocrine Services, and it involved a woman with diabetes who went to an endocrinologist's office along with her diabetes alert dog. The doctor came out and required that she take the dog to her vehicle if she wanted to be seen that day. We ended up filing that case in 2017 following the 2016 incident. And after a few delays related to COVID, we finally took it to uh, trial last month. The jury returned a unanimous verdict in favor of our client, finding that the defendant violated Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act and the Colorado Anti-Discrimination Act. The court later also decided that the defendant violated the Americans with Disabilities Act. One of the other reasons that that victory is really noteworthy is that it serves to show other individuals with disabilities that you can stand up for your civil rights. It's not always an easy process and it's not always a quick process, but it's certainly worth the effort. Another great success for the civil rights legal program over the past couple of years is the passage of House Bill 21110. What House Bill 21110 does is it makes the Colorado Anti-Discrimination Act applicable to state entities and public entities. So essentially any political subdivision within the state or even the state itself. Another great part of House Bill 21110 is that it increases the remedies available for individuals with disabilities who experience violations of the law. Prior to the passage of House Bill 21110, the remedies available to people with disabilities were limited to up to $3,500. After the passage of House Bill 21110, the remedies available are now $3,500 per plaintiff per violation. So that's certainly a great boon to individuals with disabilities. Finally, I want to give kudos to the rest of the Civil Rights Legal Program team, Kevin Williams and Kara Gillen. Without their efforts over the past couple of years, as we've all dealt with COVID, we certainly wouldn't be experiencing the victories that we are now. Over the past couple of years, we've transitioned from working in the office to working at home. We've transitioned from having in-person hearings to doing things over Zoom. And without their great attitudes, the Civil Rights Legal Program would not be in the position it is today. Hi, my name is Chris Brock. I'm the managing attorney of Probate Power, which is CCDC's Social Enterprise Legal Program. Uh, as a social enterprise, our goal is to generate revenue for the broader nonprofit so that CCDC is not solely focused on needing donations and grants to support itself. Um, we offer legal services that includes special needs trusts, guardianships, conservatorships, really any assistance to help people maintain their public benefits eligibility. Um, we've grown quite a bit over the past two years. We recently, in October of 2021, 
hired a second attorney, Hannah DeSalvo, to be um, our second attorney in the program. She was previously our paralegal. And we have also generated quite a bit of earned income over the past couple of years. In 2020, we generated just under $130,000 of earned income. In 2021, we generated $168,000 of earned income. And in 2022, we hope to generate even more to support uh, CCDC. And uh, finally, in 2022, we have started a social security applications and appeals uh, program to add to our legal practice. My name is Kenny Mastis. I'm the legislative coordinator for the Colorado Cross Disability Coalition in Denver, Colorado. However, I live 200 miles away in Lamar, Colorado. Thanks to technology, I'm able to do my job um, located in rural Colorado and still be involved in the Capitol every day, which uh, I find rewarding. It's just a job I love and I look forward to work every day. One of the big things that we've been trying to do um, in Colorado is have the right to repair for people with disabilities to be able to work on their powered wheelchairs, like change the batteries and make minor modifications to their chair. Being a rural citizen of Colorado, I guess, um, getting someone down to uh, fix my wheelchair is not always the easiest to task. So it's something that we got in close last year. We're hoping to get it passed this year. And so stay tuned and we hope to have good news at the end of the legislative session. At CCDC, another thing that we are very involved in is um, get out the vote campaign. Um, as a, as a person with a disability, as one person, my vote might not seem as that much, but when we consider that as a block, as a community, as a disability community of Colorado, the entire community coming together and have a voting block and have a voice, we do. We have a strong voice. We have a very strong voice. And it's time that we realize that and we come together as a community and we utilize the strength that we have in numbers and we get out and we do vote. The disability community in Colorado is um, becoming united. Um, it's becoming stronger every day. And it's a community I'm very proud to be a part of. Hi, I'm Don Howard. I am CCDC's Community Engagement Coordinator. I focus on housing. In the last year, I have started a housing options work group with a few CCDC members, which has helped the parents of adult children with IBD to hear and explore about different housing options for their children. I have supported several CCDC members as they become involved with Colorado Homes for All, a broad coalition of low-income individuals working for rent stabilization statewide. I have supported CTDC's volunteer lobbyists as they work to pass state legislation that benefits all of us people with disabilities and family members with disabilities. It is important to vote for the benefits um, that support all people with disabilities in our state. Fortunately, we were able to bring on two youth fellows this year. They've helped us bring a fresh lens to the work that we have done, as well as future work that we will be doing. They've helped us to design a strategic plan around developing an outreach and leadership training program for youth and college age students. Hello, my name is Sayana Hitt and I am one of the fellows with CCDC. Within my fellowship, I've been learning a lot. Mostly I have been afforded the amazing opportunity to develop a youth program for um, CCDC. We are calling it the Young Emerging Leaders for Disability Power and it really aligns nicely with the fellowship because it gives me the opportunity to put a lot of learned uh, skills into practice such as fundraising, development, um, 
coordinating different partnerships within the community, and also really honing in on that advocacy and leadership piece that CCDC holds really dear. Um, what we plan to do with this program is to really activate our young community. We know that they are the people who are going to be spearheading um, the disability rights movement um, from here on out. And so we just really need to activate them, teach them about leadership and advocacy, also what the difference is between those two and really how to engage within the community to have a successful action and to also, like I said, move this movement forward. Looking ahead at our work, we'd like to explore how we integrate diversity, equity, and inclusion into everything that we do. We want to explore our own organizational biases and how we can partner with others in the community. Hi, I'm Lacey Stein and I am the Director of Training and Membership at CCDC. I actually began working for CCDC in January of 2020. Um, and I've worked in several different capacities for CCDC. But I began my position as Director of Training and Membership at the end of 2021. Um, and thus far this year, it has been a really rewarding experience. Uh, I began the year by revamping our flagship training, which is our basic advocacy training series. So as I refreshed the course, I really wanted our participants to come away from the training with an entire toolbox of highly practical, usable resources that they know how to use and that they're excited to use in their own advocacy efforts. So sure, we go into depth about what advocacy is in the course, um, how it can be distinguished from other kinds of social justice work, and what advocacy looks like on the ground in real life. Uh, whether you're trying to make change on a large scale at the state capitol, or you're trying to make sure that your child receives the educational support they need from their homeroom teacher. Um, but importantly, as a participant in our basic advocacy training, I want you to come away from the class having actually practiced using the tools you need to accomplish your own advocacy goals. Um, our training participants create a full-blown action plan that allows them to explore what their goals are as an advocate and the steps that they would need to take if they want to engage in that work in their everyday lives. Um, and the action plans that we create in our training are definitely not one size fits all. So whether you live in Pagosa Springs or in Yuma or Craig or in downtown Denver, and whether you have a lot of resources to help you achieve your goals, or if you're just a fierce team of one person uh, and you're brand new to advocacy, the information that you receive and um, the kinds of action planning that we do in the basic advocacy training is designed to support you from start to finish so that you can create disability justice in your community and beyond. Hi, I'm Anthony and I'm a referral specialist for CCDC. Different issues I work with is housing, Medicaid, transportation, employment, social security apps, and overpayment and appeals. We all work collectively to help clients. I would like to see more overpayment experts to help get social security resolved. There's not a lot of, a lot of organizations that help in that aspect. We as a team and myself, we like to collectively put our heads together and work on different cases and see successful outcomes. We work with all different types of disabilities and we enjoy working together as a staff to overcome every aspect of individuals with different kinds of disabilities. I'm Maria Guardiola and I am the community organizer at CCDC. And uh, as I've been learning more and more about my job, I, I've learned that organizer literally means to build organizations. Now, obviously at CCDC, we already have a quite wonderful organization. Uh, but when we speak of organizer, at least in, in my world, in the world of, of nonprofits, we mean collective action, collective power organizers, where we basically go into communities and we see where people are at and what they need, and we enable them to make changes and the changes that they need and then we're able to kind of hone in on what particular identity they have, you know, what um, what specific problems they have, what resources we have at our disposal, um, you know, what uh, powers we have against us and, and basically um, how to approach those. And then, you know, we get quite specific into what our goals are and we do that through means of campaigns. But the overall goal of all of it is to enable these 
people to be able to take power into their communities. So since I, I am new, uh, I began to do this uh, in Eagle, you know, just to kind of get, get some experience in this uh, community that is dear to me. Most of them um, are immigrants, they're Latin American immigrants. So there was this community that reached out to us who has very, very little access, very little rec recognition, very little, you know, power and how they understood it to give their children um, support around their disabilities. And, um, and so I went in there and I, I realized that my job was a whole lot more listening um, and ultimately, and you know, ultimately some coaching, but again, like just being a listener and we, we were able to identify what it was that was most urgent in their community, what resources they had. You know, our motto is nothing about us without us. And so my hope is that we will carry that in every region of Colorado and that we'll be able to have these small community chapters who are able to come together, identify their needs, and then get support, you know, from us at the statewide level and that we'll be able to cooperate with one another to have that beautiful balance of, you know, autonomy and also, you know, centrality um, and that we, we're able to just enrich the lives of people with disabilities, um, you know, in their neighborhoods, in their towns, you know, in their counties and ultimately at the state and that, you know, we have this, uh, this harmony between these small communities and, and our overall goals because I think that you know having that um, partnership that symbiotic relationship can just create the, the greatest change because people who know that they're um, capable people who know that they're empowered um, those are the, the those are the ones that make the greatest changes and so that's my goal throughout all of Colorado our staff and volunteers are here to advocate for social justice supporting Coloradans with all types of disabilities you can support our mission by spreading awareness of our services to your friends and family or by making a financial contribution by visiting our website www.ccdconline.org and click on donate. We are grateful for your partnership. Thank you.